And I use technology to do that. We actually use something called Cesium, if you're familiar with it, 3D Globe, open source. And it's at climateviewer.org, it's a map. So I take mapping data and I make it fun for people and make it a video game kind of thing. That's awesome. So we have two different things that I think we would love to show you. Yeah. One is Sensor, which is directly behind you. And, okay. and Brooks and Mark and JJ can certainly talk that to you about that. Cool. And then the other is, Jeff, you want to just raise your hand? <laughs> you can talk to you about AWIPS, which is our processing. Okay. Uh, so it and that's a Unidata thing? Is that related to the Unidata thing? Uh, kind of. I mean, they had something called AWIPS. I was just over there. Right. They're like the, I guess, open source okay. aspect of it. Okay. We're the contract uh, for Okay, cool. So let's start here. Yeah, show me some cool stuff. Y'all got the cool one of the coolest booths I've seen so far. The unfortunate thing is you won't be able to visualize anything other than what's on the screen, but you'll be able to see what's on the screen. Certainly. Sure. But can you go ahead and get him Oh, it's a uh, VR. Can you read this one, Brooks? Sure. These glasses yeah, it's from like VR or it's augmented reality. So right. AR. You're not going to be able to see it. But no, you will be able to he'll see. be I'll, you, I'll, I'll whisper in your ear as he's seeing things. I'd rather be out here. I mean, you know what you can do? I've got a microphone oh, got right here. Over here. You can tell us. Like, you're you're going to want to shoot I across because everything that he's seeing, except it'll be in two dimensional okay, here, yeah. he's going to see it in a three dimensional model. Right. right. Do you mind? I am absolutely. I'm right about where my hand is, and I can hear you. Okay. Yeah. And you can just run. Give us the blow by blow. Oh my God. Step in uh, to the You're table here. This is, this is right. fine. Okay, so what this they're, is what they're seeing radar fine. is a representation of anywhere America. You see a terminal Doppler weather radar. You see urban Next crawl. rad. You see an ARS R is what? So that's a long range. And you've got a, a weather storm in the beginning of the city and uh, terminal Doppler weather radar showing up in the screen. Oh, but it's rather low resolution. You can click this with this by holding it on. This is cycling through very quickly. No, wait a minute. I got two guys talking at the same time. So trade off. Let, let's let him uh, get control of it. There we go. Okay. So this is representative of the current uh, the legacy ground based surveillance radar system. There's 600 of them in the United States, some up to 50 years old. Yeah. Uh, very expensive to maintain, becoming obsolete. The sensor program is a program that uh, the U.S. government uh, is asking DOD, FAA, wow. DHS, and NOAA uh, to vacate a portion of the RF spectrum that they can then sell to uh, right. broadband companies That's right. and use those proceeds to upgrade this system. So the joint surveillance system was the FAA's long-range tracking system, and I see the terminal Doppler weather radars, the next rads. So we have all of this in 9-11 still have. How, how, how did the planes get lost with all these radars? I mean... So we have what, what the surveillance system does, uh, it's a secondary uh, solution. So today we have ADSB, which is where planes... Satellite range. Yeah, they report their positions. Uh, a surveillance system is a backup to ADSB or a non-cooperative track. I used yeah. to fly F-18s for the Navy. Okay. I didn't want to be tracked, so I just you could get under down radar. here where I'm not supposed to be flying. Right. I could just turn off my transponder and not be tracked. Yeah. These, the next generation radar, which I'll show you rather than go through the whole thing, uh, we'll be able to track non-cooperative tracks. So that could be threats to the border. Uh, okay, so let me describe to him what I'm seeing here. Sure. Yeah. I got autoplay, click through. You got controls for the animation over here, so a slider. It says Homeland Defense Missile, Homeland Security Drug Trafficking, ATC Wind Turbine, Sensor Weather. Now, if I hold this dot on here, is that activating it? You just That's, hold it for I, a different... I activate that. Uh, it's my chopstick. So okay, so... What you see, pinch. Homeland Defense, Homeland Security, ATC Wind Turbine are different scenarios where the sensor network... So if you look at the uh, hologram table, okay. this is the new, the next generation radar. So you see... The ESA radar is actually an active electronic display array radar. Okay. So these are these are simultaneously in every direction. Right. So and these are divine. You can see that those are four panels. Yeah. So it's omnidirectional. Instead of waiting for the sweep each time, you guys are getting everything at the same time. It's almost one second update. Wow. And within that, if you have a, a storm, so if you look over there in the distance, you see a priority of the storm. Uh, electronically scanned array radar can direct a beam or beam steer energy at the storm while also doing its general surveillance yeah. job. So it's still looking at 360 degrees, but it can dedicate a steered beam at that high priority thread. Okay. Which then provides you get a high resolution target on it. Yeah. Fidelity, uh, retention.
Wow. Service. And it's networked, so all of these systems, all these radar systems are working together to overlay their returns. Now, what kind of frequency and power ratings are, are these working on? <laughs> As opposed to like the next rads, they're like 750,000 watts. I would have to get you to touch a smarter okay. okay. I'm just the pilot. Too. I'm just curious, I've never heard of these new sensors. And, you know, they're omnidirectional. What's funny is I was having this thought the other day. I was like, why wouldn't they replace the, the, the radars with lasers? You know what I mean? They fire in every direction sure. simultaneously. That would take a, a immense I mean, amount of power. It, yeah. So, power aside, it would be super accurate. But <laughs> you got you got the videos up here and every. This so, is yeah, amazing. Yeah, so this just depicts kind of all the information being routed to a weather station. Yeah. And they can provide very high quality fidelity forecasting and this predictive is beautiful. modeling to the radar. To kind of inform the public and then and we can take action. Basis. I want to just real quick. Be, yes, that's what I expected. I wanted to walk around it. <laughs> it's amazing. So it's it's locked. Is this actually the? It's doing motion capture to to put this on the table. So it's recognizing the table as the location. The table, render table. Move it. So uh, I can actually. Wanted to turn around and move it over here. We could pick that up and move it. The table, it, it learns kind of the dimension and it fits there best. So the table is just a prop to kind of hold this. Up. Yeah. But so basically, this is working the camera in the three D model. It's tracking my headspace to say I am here in relation to that, and that's how it's giving me the view. That's brilliant. Which that is, is a, absolutely a really brilliant. Cool way, and you know, it's a really cool way to talk about radar, but. The, what you can do with this is you know, educationally. Oh yeah. Uh, you were talking about making things. Like, yeah. This all this stuff fun. You should see the lines we have for people that just want to put this. Oh, on. I can imagine. And I mean, talk about radar. Who wants to do that? Well, I mean, now can I control this weather? I mean, how, what do I have to do? I mean, what button do I push to make so the weather go away? I can control <laughs> it. Uh, to make it go away. What do you return to normal? So this will start. The weather will start moving. Now the radar will back to. That was way easier than what they're doing upstairs. <laughs> Way easy. So this what, is, are the, this what are the red blinking lights I see? I don't see probably those lights. Lo probably locating where they're, where they're <coughs> Infrared red yeah. blinking is yeah. probably... Steve here can answer any of the hollow lights. It might, oh, you know, some, my eye it's right? not visible to the eye. It's only on my video camera. Okay. There's there's two red it's, blinking. It's watching my eye probably. Uh, no, there's an onboard camera and it's actually where tracking where you're scanning. Okay. It's depth sensor. So it's actually time, doing so. the lasers out here to see where I am in relation to the tape. Right. And that's how it's sensing depth mm -hmm. and targeting and anchoring the image that you guys are yep. watching. Wow. And you can see all the way up the column. It's really it's cool. Expensive. So we, we use this technology to, to take a very complex subject and present it. Make it understandable. And also really. ensure that everybody participating in this has the same view and the same understanding. If I was to write you a paper, you would add your own experiences and background into that paper. And you might not have the same impression that he has, but by walking through it all together, we ensure that everybody comes away with the same understanding. And so it's just a, a way for us to visualize a very complex problem in America, which That's is to impressive. refresh the entire radar yeah. set, but do it in a way that's a little bit fun and also informative. Very, very cool stuff. So this is, I saw something similar to this in like the heads up displays and the new fighters and stuff. So this is like, I know that augmented reality VR wave of the future. How, how is this something that'll ever end up in like a, something I can play with at my house? Oh, absolutely. It's already there. I have uh, the helmet out of sight. It was just yeah. like this. And you can look. You can look out the side the window. and where you're looking. Yeah. I can look down at the ground if somebody's shooting, up, shooting something at me, I go look down and everything goes to my radar maps there, the weapons map there. Yeah. The Same with the patchy longbow and the, exactly. the 30 mil and all that stuff. I think it's fascinating stuff. And, and, and for like the, the public, like educating them, trying to make them understand complex things like weather systems, how they react with, that's brilliant. Um, and it, I think it's an amazing product. Earlier we have. had a, a young captain here from the Air Force asking us if we could mm -hmm. use these to first model a storm and then be able to analyze the storm from all angles. And the answer is yes. If you have the data, you simply can move it into this is a Microsoft product. So move it into this computer on your head and you basically created the ability to analyze that model from three and four dimensions. Okay. Very, very, a very cool. cool thing. And so for us, it's a good marketing tool to, to be able to put a lot of information in front of somebody and actually have them walk away. Oh yeah, I mean, there's the power of visualization. That's why I got into mapping. Um, it's a 
An example of what I do is try to map out pollution, make it understandable to people. So you could talk about fracking wells till you're blue in the face, but when I show you 800,000 of them and you can see them in your backyard, suddenly it becomes an issue. And then I go, well, what is fracking related to? And what it's related to is drought. So the next question is, what do you do about drought? Well, they do weather modification upstairs. So what the similarity I found in my map was that the locations where there's fracking, there is drought, and where there is drought, there is cloud seeding. So just being able to visualize that, I could write that in paper all day long, nobody would ever get it, but in five seconds, you look at the map, it's the west coast, it's all fracked, it's droughted, and it's got weather modification all over it. This is correlations that people with eyeballs can understand. This is a brilliant tool for something like that. Cesium, yeah, Cesium JS, and we pull a lot of the NASA data yeah. and display it in real time. In, in a former life, I helped DFA build uh, Airports GIS, and and we we started out with some Esri products, but but we we moved to open source Cesium a little mm -hmm. bit of Google Earth to begin with. But yeah, that's Google what Earth, I was doing before. Google Earth dropped off. They, that's they why I went to Cesium. So we did the same thing for the FAA and moved to Cesium, and so airports are using. Uh, they're putting data into this massive database and being able to visualize the that next stuff. gen. See it, see it. Well, it's actually under an airports program called Airports GIS, and it's it's just airport operators who are when they want to expand a runway and, and, and build something new, they model it before okay. because there was a lot of lack of information sharing before. So it's something I did, but we use Cesium for that very reason. Yeah. When Google when Google Maps and Google Earth stuff, they did the they same thing, and we were system. like. I had satellite tracking, every boat on the planet, every flight yep. on the planet, all, yeah, all available yes. real time on my map, and then they killed Google Earth. Yep. Hey Jim, can we, can we look at oh, yeah, AWIP or what? Hey, what are you talking about? Right you see this. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, let me see yeah, this. Definitely. They, got AWIP. This what do you got there? What you got, man? Jeff? This is Jeff. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Uh, this I, is I want your beard. Oh. <laughs> um. <laughs> Seriously. So uh, I'll talk to you guys briefly about AWIPS, uh, the Advanced Weather Interactive Processing System. Uh, this was designed by Raytheon. It's essentially the, uh, both the software and the hardware network uh, that the National Weather Service uses for visualizing, um, interrogating data, and also disseminating and issuing the products. I'm not going to get your card. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. So this is all touchscreen? Yes. And Space Launch Florida. That stuff really has nothing to do with AWIPS. I don't care. <laughs> oh, that's fun. Yep. All right, so this is this is a content delivery network and a visualization tool all in one. Yep, so this is, it allows the forecasters to view um, all types of data. They can be model data, radar data, satellite observations, uh, model ensembles, and then it also allows them to manipulate grids uh, and, and send that grid of data to the ESPN okay. to uh, public and to uh, external users. Uh, channel or okay. like that. So this is a this is a product who who, who specifically uses this right now? Weather.com? Uh, no, the National Weather Service. The National Weather Service. Yep, this uses, is uh, AOX2 for their official forecasts. Okay. If you've ever gone to weather.gov, uh -huh. all, all the data on there is uh, created from AOX. Okay, all the cool. Created products on there. So y'all you pull the you pull the sensor data from around the world, you guys make predictions on it, visualize it for AWS, and then they make their they pass the information on that. Absolutely correct. Well, there you go. So um quick question. Sure. I know that Raytheon used to be involved in some of the space weather stuff. Do you guys still do any of that? Um so the uh, Space Weather Prediction Center um, has AWIPS there. Okay. Um, but they don't really use it for um, issuing any of the space weather products. They more use it for visualizing some of the space weather data. Okay, so it's more like solar wind, shape of the ionosphere, yeah. things like that yeah, today. That kind of thing. Okay. But they really don't. Uh, space Weather uh, Prediction Center doesn't really use it for issuing any of the products. Like yeah, it's it's, it's really it's really hard to find good visualizations on that kind of information. Yeah. Um, one of the reasons that you know it interested me is you know of course online everybody talks about heart you know ionosphere right. heaters things like that, and Raytheon used to be involved in that sort of thing. But um, what we're looking at was trying to you know basically visualize the ionosphere on a daily basis, something that we could put on our climate viewer that. The idea for Climate Viewer, the thing I'm doing, is from ground to space, you know, that you can see it yourself, you don't need a weather guy, go there and see the same visualizations that they have, obviously I can't afford this. So, 
Um, not practical for workers. Yeah. No. <laughs> so what we're trying to do is just make something that's sciencey enough, but not so complicated that people can't get in and play with it. Gotcha. And that's the extreme of playing. Right. But there has to be some kind of way for, you know, like this AWEBS, you know, the Unidata IDB guys over there were like, well, we, you know, we are pretty much open source, but there really isn't a lot of data, you know, that you can visualize for space weather at all. Right. I mean, do you know of any? Um, not off the top of my head. Um, like you said, that's kind of very specialized. It's not everyone that's looking at it. Yeah. So that's a little trickier to visualize than, say, you know, radar or something. Mm. And as far as I understand it, the, the only place I could even find one is like some Japanese website that models the ionosphere, and they've got the, the spaghetti model, and it's just so old. Yep. So, like, maybe while you're not busy, y'all work on that. <laughs> I'd like to see that next year when I come here. It'd be really cool. Hopefully, I think the next meeting is like Phoenix. Maybe, yeah. maybe come to Phoenix and something. <laughs> work on it, man. I know, I know you got the budget. I'll do my best. <laughs> Appreciate it, Thanks. Jeff. This is impressive work, guys. I like it a lot. And uh, you definitely got the sharpest piece here. And you are with Raytheon. Raytheon. Yes. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Y'all keep shooting them rays. We'll keep coming over and checking it out. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. Take care. Thank you. If this video resonates with you, leave me a comment because I love hearing from y'all. First time here? Be sure to subscribe and click the bell. The bell doesn't always work, so come to ClimateViewer.com and sign up for our newsletter. Remember... It would be impossible for me to do this without your support, so please join my Patreon or buy me a coffee on PayPal. And always, attack ideas, not people.